Hi again, I'm back to do another tutorial. This one's going to be on the events section. Um, just on a note, I'm trying to keep these fairly generalized tutorials. These are client specific for a site that was recently developed. But I'm trying to make these so that they can be useful for anybody, any end users, to learn how to interface with the Mod X Revolution uh, management area. Uh, for Definitely for our own sites because I, we will be utilizing these same methods in the future for uh, these various sections, these kind of automations. If other people use these same methods, they can at least get a background and, um, and this help them learn the site as well, or how to use the uh, manager as well. So I hope that everybody finds these useful, even if these are a little bit more specific to how our actual ModX deployments have been customized. So let's jump right in. This one again is going to be for events. This is using the Events Calendar 2 plugin, which is another magnificent plugin, uh, another um, developer that I'm definitely going to be supporting in the near future because uh, this is just great. It works flawlessly. It doesn't have any bugs and it is magnificent. So here we are at the manager login which is your website forward slash manager. Let's get logged in. <coughs> so again we'll come over here. We do see the resources tab and the file tab. I'm going to come over to expand tree, get all my list broadened out here. Now the way that this add-on works, just for a background, just for people that might be using it in the future, if you'd like to know how we've um, used it here for automation, you can simply contact me through the um, contact form on the site. and ask me and I'll be happy to show you how this was put in place. This is a great way, a great tool. <clears throat> so now let's look on the website so you can see how we have it showing through on the front end. On the front end of the site, here is the calendar. We, we actually made like a calendar widget out of it. We shrunk it down, we made it small, and here's the calendar. You can see it's on the current month. You can see the days. They simply they have a hover effect when you go over them. There is no click effect on the on the dates themselves. However, if you go down to a date in green, which is a date signaling that you have a uh, event for that day, you'll get a drop down. And you can actually have more than one event on that day, which is why it was set up like this. So if you have, here's your event, say for the 30th, and I come over, the link is actually the red title of the um, event itself, I would click it, and it would take me to the event page, which I have just a very short description. This can be as long or short as you'd like. Let's go back. And the other way that we have it deployed is in a large calendar. We did this instead of a list because we thought it worked better for this application. The calendar is easy to interface with, and everything you want is right there. So you can see here is the same calendar in a very large format. We use the second theme on it, and it has the same dates highlighted. You can change months with these arrows, and it does not take a page refresh to do so. Here's another event. And this one is actually a PayPal event or a PayPal integrated event, and here you can see. And that's our two calendar systems we have in place on this site. Let's go back to the back end. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, how we accomplish this real, real quick for other developers and such is that calendar add-on has to be put in underneath, it has to be put in a container, and then events in that inside the container show up on the calendar after you set the date for the associated TV. The way that we accomplish the dual calendar system here, and we happened upon this by uh, simply trial and error and um, didn't read how to do this anywhere to get it to show up in two places, was of course we wanted on the home page as a widget, and then we put underneath the home page, here is the calendar page as also a container. And then here's our two events. So we add the events underneath into, into this sub menu. And by doing so, it populates to the event calendar and it populates all the way up to the home page. That's how we accomplish this. 
So, so in order to add an event, all you're going to have to do is add a page underneath the events calendar folder. If you only put it underneath the home page, it will only show up um, on the home page calendar and will not also populate the other. If we just pop one open and look real quick, you can see we have the name of the resource and we have the brief description we put here. And you see um, our date, our slots, our selection process for either a free registration or a PayPal link. Which, if I jump back to the site, if I can show you, this is a free registered event where we built a form. And this other would, in July, is a paid event, and we have a PayPal integration there on the side. So that would, this would be the general process of how to set up this resource, and also this middle column you want to pay attention to as well, because the name of this center column heading, which is this heading right here, even on an event, this heading bootcamp is the actual name of the event that shows up and populates to the form and to the um, get sent to you with the client. So let's set up a new event. So in order to do that, we're going to come over here into the file tree. We're going to put our mouse on the event calendar folder, the subfolder of the two that contains our events. <clears throat> we're going to right click. We're going to come to our drop down, we're going to go to create, and we're going to go to create document here. What that's going to do is it's going to put a new page below that file tree, below that container. So here we are opening up to a new resource. You cannot see anything yet in the file tree because it's not a saved resource, and we're going to name it. So let's name this one Motocross Fun Day. Long title, you can feel welcome to put that in, and description, these would be for most, mostly for uh, search engines. Um, you can, uh, personally, I wouldn't even worry about it because they're going to be able to find your events through your calendar, not necessarily from searching them on Google. You're welcome to put these in if you'd like. You could put a longer description in here. This will show up in the title bar of a hit on Google along with this title as well as in your tab up here. This description you will not see on the front end, but it would be the paragraph of this page in a Google hit. You're going to want to come over here. By default, we have the events template chosen. If you push this button, you will see other templates. I may shorten this list at some time. Right now, pretty much all of them are in here. At some point later in the site as well, there may be a need for you to have access to these to be able to change them. For the events, you want to leave it default. You want to leave it on events. You can click hide from menus to, to make sure it doesn't show up in any of the menu structures, although the way this site is built, it will not anyway. But just for uh, peace of mind, it's good to have that check. And of course, you want to check publish, which it should be by default anyway, so that it does show up as a, a viewable resource on the web. After we have the page named and those boxes checked and everything the template verified, let's go to template variables. In the very first section here, you can see the categories event, and here's the current event date. So we're going to select a date. Let's put this one in July on a Saturday, let's say the 14th. Let's pick a time. Let's say 11 a.m. Here's our slots. How many slots are remaining remain for this event? Slots or spots, however you want to refer to them. If you go back here to our page. We have a nice little visual here, of course, of the, the spots remaining. Um, this is a manually updated so, uh, uh, display. Um, we wanted to definitely have this here so that visitors could see, you know, okay, there's no spots left. I, I need, I can't register. Or, oh, this one's full. Let's look for another date. Um, and even though that this is not an automated updating thing, it's very, very simple to update on your own and keep your visitors informed and see what's going on. 
So for this one, let's say it's a brand new event. We have 14 spots, let's say. And now you got to pay attention to these next two links. These two are, are related. You have to check one of these two boxes. If both of them are unchecked, I'm not even sure exactly what happens. But it won't be good because you'll have a clash of code. Basically, what would happen is they would, the both forms would stack on top of each other. And you would have the free event form and the PayPal form, which um, it, it's not set up to handle. So you're going to want to check two of these, one of these two boxes. And I may actually have one of them checked by default, um, just so that they're, one of them is definitely always checked. So if you check these, one of these, if you check the box, it turns off the corresponding code. So this is, click here to turn off the free registration link. This is the free link, the free form. It'll turn off the whole section. Click here to, to turn off the PayPal button. This will turn off the complete PayPal button. So one of the two. So for this event, let's say that this is a paid event. So we're going to turn off the free registration link like so. For this, for this tutorial, I'm not going to get into creating a PayPal button because of account invasion of privacy concerns. Um, it's fairly simple. <clears throat> I can walk you through that. I might make a separate video um, or I just give, give some verbal instruction. But getting the, creating the PayPal button is fairly simple uh, for this client, Epic. You guys already have a PayPal button saved that has uh, is built properly for use within this. All you have to do is use that PayPal button, adjust the number of slots, which this slots in the PayPal paid link is also tracked so that people cannot pay register if this gets a zero, no matter what you update this to. So, if this is a paid event, then you want this PayPal checkbox unchecked, and here's simply where you would put the embed code. So after you have your button, you would copy paste it to this box. That's not it, but it would be there. Then you would come up here to this middle column. Of course, you could pick your banner image with this drop down, the same way I've demonstrated you before of how to add an image. Uh, one update, the mistake I made before about uploading to this. Um, if you want to upload to this, that should be fine. You can upload with this button right here, and you can upload a image directly to here, and it should populate. You can use your filter box there to um, filter them down and pick your box. So we're going to leave that alone because that's sort of unrelated to this registration. This is your default. That will show up anyway. But you do have to fill out a center column heading. I probably should put a note in here, but just as a verbal, this center column heading is also your, in this situation, is your event name. So if you go back to the front end, here is your center column heading once again. And I have the automation built in place where this populates to this uh, part of the free form. Now, let's go back to the back end. So let's name the event. What did we call it? Motocross Fun Day. And just copy the same page title that you have. And that's the only two template variables that are used. Now we want to come down and we can do a description. So we're going to put this one, let's just say, um, Motocross Fun Day. And let's say I wanted just to show you a little bit of how to use this interface, uh, this text editor. Say I wanted that three words in bold. You could just hit Control or Command B the same way you would do in a Word document, or come over here to B for bold. It would bold that word. Let's save it.
And this event now shows up in my file tree, Motocross Fun Day. And now it will automatically have populated both menus. Let's check it. Let's go to the home page and check that menu first. 14th. No. Wait a minute. <clears throat> yes, July 14th. Okay, and on July 14th, here's an example. I have two events because that other boot camp I had put in was also there. And you can see now there's two events listed. So that's a very handy feature as well. So if I click on my Motocross Fun Day, here's the page. And there's the title. The date automatically displays here on the page so people know what they're viewing. Here's my description following below with a bolded part of the text. Here is the slots remaining of 14. And pay now to reserve your slot today and there would be a PayPal button here after you put in that embed code to take people to PayPal to go ahead and pay register for this event. And to demonstrate that and also we'll check our other calendar while we're at it. We will go to the other event that I already had in place with the sample PayPal code which was this, is this first one on the 14th. And once we had our embed code, it would automatically come in like so. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and add, I, I just uh, realized one of the things possibly left out is when people pay, they're not going to have a date listed here for this event um, unless you specify the events as separate. There, there's one little piece that I need to put in here. I believe what I am going to do is add a second box you add these blank spots here in your PayPal um, button when you create it. What we should do is create a second one and put in there for them to list the event and the date as well. So I've created this with the, the ability for them to put the attendee name right here. So let's say Fred. And then they could click Pay Now. And they'll be taken to the familiar, which we have all seen before, PayPal screen to go ahead and pay and register. They'll put their information in there. Um, and they can also up here update the quantity if they had more than one um, person coming in. And they would go ahead and register and pay right here on the site in the, by that process. So that's how you set up a basic event. If it was going to be free, let's just see real quick. Might as well at the end of this tutorial. Let's take the same event. We're still on it in the back end. Motocross Fun Day. Instead of PayPal, we're going to come down here and we're going to make it a free event. Even if you had PayPal embed code here, you could still turn this off and that button would disappear. So click there to turn off the PayPal. Turn the, click there on the top link to turn on the free event registration. Save. Go back to the front end. Let's navigate back to that event. July 14th. Motocross Fun Day. And now, as you can see, the PayPal button over here, everything else is the same, but the PayPal button has been removed and has been replaced by this free registration form. So that they would fill out this form and all this information would be sent to you and you would know that they would be registered. So a couple little small things to add on the PayPal aspect. Make sure that um, they give enough information so you have, you have their uh, all their information. But this is how we accomplish the event and registration integration and also the e-commerce. If it was simply a non-paid event, I could use we could use this form for all of them, but working in PayPal makes it a bit trickier, and that is the solution that we came up with to best meet the needs um, of you, the client, for this site. 
So that's how you add an event. Again, back end real quick for a summary. You come under here, under the home page, container slash page. You would drop down that box. You would drop down the box for the event calendar folder. And you right click on the event calendar folder. You would come to create, you would create a new document. And then you would follow the steps that we just went through to fill in this information to click have your new event, come click save, and it automatically populates to the two calendars. So that's a fairly simple um, automation. Um, took a bit to automate, but everything in place works well, and um, we definitely feel like it meets your needs, and we hope that you like using it, and I hope this has been a successful tutorial, and I look forward to making some more in the future.